Hello internet, it is Adam Malik Aaron Aaron and welcome back to Box Office Predictions. Today we are going to be talking about Scream 5. But Malik, the movie is called Scream. I don't care. It's Scream 5. That's what it is. That's what I'm going to be calling it. End of discussion. So as usual, we're going to be going over the pros and cons. So let's get to it. Pros. So Scream 5 is the fifth movie in the Scream series, a series that's been around for over 25 years, and the first four movies were helmed by the late, great horror icon Wes Craven. And, you know, Scream is a rather interesting series when it comes to horror, because this series takes a more of a... has a more meta edge <laughs> when compared to other horror series, because... The, you know, with the first Scream and all the others after it, it did something rather unique. It openly pointed out and mocked various genre tropes and cliches in the movie itself. Hell, in the first Scream movie, like some of the characters were watching Halloween, the original Halloween from 1978. And uh, Jamie Kennedy's character in the movie straight up goes over like the rules of surviving a horror movie in a horror movie itself so yeah and plus all scream movies have a rather um whodunit factor as well where ghostface you know the killer of all the movies you don't really know who ghostface is it's not like say a Freddy or a Jason or Leatherface or a Michael where it can only be one person ghostface can be anyone so that's another thing I think that really helped the Scream series. And for the most part, the Scream series was a massive success. Like the first movie, although it had a rather modest opening, it had some rather remarkable longevity, making over 100 million domestic, 173 million worldwide. The sequel was greenlit immediately afterwards, coming out less than a year later. Did about as well financially and doing weight. It had and actually broke records at the time when it came out. I think it broke like the December record for 1997. And that was the same month Titanic came out. So yeah, December of 1997 was a wild time, I would imagine. <laughs> and even Scream 3, despite not being as well received as the previous two, still did pretty good. It it was only off by just a smidge from its predecessors. And Scream 4... We'll talk about Scream 4 when we get to the cons. But, um, yeah, overall, the Scream series is very successful. It's very recognizable. So, yeah, this movie has all the brand name recognition. <laughs> has, you know, going for it. Like, Scream is an iconic horror series. And, you know, people knowing about a new one, people are obviously going to be interested in it in some form. So, yeah, brand name recognition, easy pro right here. So that's pro number one. Pro number two, the reviews for this movie. Now, the reviews for this movie are actually really good, which kind of surprised me a little bit because of its release date. Because you see, January is pretty much a death sentence to most movies now i know there have been good january movies in the past i know it was bad boys for life it was split it was the paddington movies <laughs> but those are few and far between majority of january movies are just dumped there just to make some money and 2020 oh my god it was, it was a nightmare <laughs> because i had to cover so many trashy horror movies that month alone it was awful one of them being the grudge 2020 which if you remember i thought was a reboot but it wasn't it was a weird movie that took place with the in like in the middle of the 2004 movie it doesn't matter that movie did terrible <laughs> it did awful and so this skin that january date concerned me a little bit but reviews for this movie have been very good I think it's a like 77% last I checked, which is just Oscar worthy for January. So I don't know who's going to look at that score and be like, ew, no, that's, I don't want to watch that. <laughs> so yeah, the fact that this is a good movie in January, a real rarity, 
in the grand scheme of things, yeah, that's an easy pro right there. So that's pro number two. An even better pro is that audience reaction for Y here is quite good as well. I think it's audience score on Rotten Tomatoes like a 92% at this point in time. But obviously, more people have to watch it in order for that to either go up or down. But so far, word of mouth seems to be very good. So this movie doesn't have to worry about a Matrix 4 situation where bad word of mouth killed that movie before it even stood. It even had a chance. So, yeah, good word of mouth is pro number three. Pro number of four... This movie has no real competition at all. No direct competition. In fact, the last big horror movie to come out was Halloween Kills. And that was in October. I know there was Antlers, but I don't think anyone knew that movie existed. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's been a long time since we had a big horror movie in the marketplace. Don't be an even longer time before we have another one. Because... I know the black phone was supposed to come out in February, but then got that got moved to June. So I I can't even think of anything. I can't think of anything at all. Uh, what's the next horror movie coming? I don't I don't know. I think this could be the only one for like months. So it, again, no direct competition in sight, not not for miles. So yeah, doesn't have to worry about that. So, that's another easy pro. That's pro number four. Yeah, pro number four. Uh, pro number five. This is kind of going with the whole brand name recognition thing. So, you know, Scream 5 is a bit of a legacy sequel where you have the original characters there, but you also have a bunch of new characters. It's kind of similar to, say, A Force Awakens or Jurassic World. Well, kind of Jurassic World. That was mostly a new cast. Uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife is a great example. And usually th that could be kind of iffy now, like because it, it could be just be seen as a lazy, soulless cash grab. And a lot of these movies kind of are that. But this one's a little more different. I think because that good word of mouth, you know, older fans of the series will be interested in seeing these characters again. You know, the characters they watched in the previous four movies. And, you know, I guess this movie can also create newer newer fans who watch this and then they get interested and then they watch all the other Scream movies. So it's perfect. It's perfect. It's a good old cross-generational movie. So, yeah, that's always a good thing. So I would consider that a pro. Uh, I think that's it with the pros. So as you see, this movie has a lot going for it. And oh, not to mention this Thursday previews. As you see right here, made three point five million in previews, which is very, very good for you know horror. I think the only one like I think only Quiet Place Two and Halloween Kills did better in previews. Those were like at, above like the four million range. And again, this is January, the month where movies go to die. So the fact it's doing this well at all is great, and this preview number sh it should be. A good indicator on where this movie on how well this movie might do so yeah good preview num it's always better to have a good preview number than a bad preview number so this is good so that's a pro so this movie has a lot going for it right well there's some cons but i don't think they're going to be that big but there's still i still gotta note them so big con is that this is the first real bit of competition Spider-Man No Way Home is facing. Now, if you have been paying attention the last few weeks, you should know that it's like the box office has been all Spider-Man. All Spider-Man for over a month now. <laughs> it's been nothing but Spider-Man. Sure, Sing 2 did okay, but after that, it's, it's a graveyard. <laughs> it really is. With just so many disasters one after another, trying to survive in the Spider-Man landscape, but they just can't. And, I mean, there's just a whole list. I mean, there's... I could count West Side Story. I know they came out the week before Spider-Man, but Spider-Man killed it, so I'm going to count it. West Side Story, Nightmare Alley, Matrix 4, 
The King's Man, American Underdog, Journal for Jordan, Licorice Pizza, and recently the 355 all did terrible and were all destroyed by Spider-Man. <laughs> and, you know, Matrix 4, what some could argue, that is kind of like a good comparison for this. But the difference is, Scream 5, people say that movie is good. Matrix 4 was not very good. <laughs> and it kind of deserved to fail, honestly. Um, so, yeah. So pretty much any movie not called No Way Home has been tanking. And will that happen with this? I don't think so. I really don't think so at all. But it's still something to note. And because Spider-Man, it's not as big as it initially was, but it's still making a decent amount of cash. So Scream 5 is going to have to deal with that. But I think it can survive, but still, it's going to have to deal with that. So that's, well, it's not even a big con. It's kind of like a minor con in the grand scheme of things. So con number one. Um, I guess I can mention Omnicron, but again, Spider-Man wasn't affected. And I know some people said all these other movies were affected by Omicron, and maybe they were in some way, but I think it's just because they just weren't very good <laughs> and nobody cared. I think that's why a lot of those movies tank. For this, people do care about it, and yeah, I think it will do much better than all those movies. Hell, I think it will make more in its opening weekend than some of those movies made total. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I wouldn't really count Omicron as a con there because yeah i know the pandemic is still here it's still making things very wonky box office wise but i don't think it's gonna have a big effect so that's not even gonna really mention that really uh oh yeah scream four oof <laughs> i almost forgot so scream four oof 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 now although scream four was received better than scream three my god, it did terrible <laughs> in the comparison to the others. It'll open with like 18 million, maybe like 38 million total. Compared to its predecessors, it's abysmal. And it's even worse when you account for inflation. So it's even more horrific. So that kind of made me think initially, this is my initial thought process. I'm like, if people didn't care that much about Scream 11 years ago, what makes, like, like, will they still care now? Like, but then I remembered Scream 4 came around a time where, you know, the idea of like horror revivals was kind of reviled at the time. I know people say, like, if you think the reboot situation now is bad, you clearly weren't paying attention to the horror genre in the mid early 2000s because it was just like, the amount of reboots and remakes was rampant <laughs> from Freddy, the Jason, the Michael, the Leatherface, all of them getting 21st century updates. And I mean, there's so many others. I mean, there's all the J horror remakes like The Ring, Grudge, One Missed Call. Um, uh, there was My Bloody Valentine. There was um, The Omen. That's another one uh prom night was another one and yeah a lot of these movies were very bad and i think the one that really broke was the, that was the shot that broke the camel's back was the nightmare on elm street 2010 movie a movie that many deemed awful <laughs> truly awful so i think horror fans were extremely burnt out with rehashes and remakes and reboots and so i think that's why scream 4 just didn't just didn't work out but now people are a lot more friendly towards horror revivals and remakes. I mean, look how well Halloween 2018 did, right? So, yeah. The so Scream, like, Scream 5 is in a much better place now than Scream 4 was, so. But still, Scream 4, the fact that it did so bad <laughs> made me worried about the chances for this movie. But it seems like, look at the Thursday box office, you got nothing to worry about. So, I just wanted to mention that. <laughs> But anywho, yeah, opening weekend. This is going to be, well, it's going to be, I have to do two predictions, three day and four day, because this is coming out on a holiday weekend, MLK Junior weekend. And that's like the most lucrative weekend in January. And playing movies have done well. 
this weekend. I mean, 2020, we had Bad Boys for Life, which destroyed everything when it came out. And like in the past, I mean, darn. I mean, there was American Sniper in 2015 when it went wide. Uh... I think uh, Glass did okay. I mean, it did fine, but it didn't live up to expectations. That was 2019. And after that's kind of like more small scale stuff. Well, Paul Bart Mall Cop, the masterpiece, <laughs> that did very well. Cloverfield in 2008. So, yeah, if you release the right movie on MLK Weekend, it will do well. And with Scream. I don't know what I could compare it to. I could compare it to Halloween 2018, but eh, that's a, it's a little too high for any movie. But I could also compare it to Matrix 4 in a way. And I don't think it's going to do as bad as that. Nowhere near as bad. So I'm going to say it's going to open between 25 and 30 for the three day and 30 to 35 for the four day. Although I think it could do better than that, but that's what I'm going with just to be safe. So, yeah, that's what that's what I'm going with. And it's total... Uh, I think it'll still be a tad front-loaded because, again, brand name recognition. So, maybe 60 to 70 million. I think it will do a whole lot better than Scream 4. That's all it has to do, really. Just do better than Scream 4 and you will automatically be a success. So, and plus the movie was cheap. It only costs $24 million, so it doesn't even need to make a lot to make money. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that's it. That's it for the weekend. Next weekend, I cover The King's Daughter, Redeeming Love, and then nothing else for January. So, pretty much Scream is the only interesting movie coming out this month. <laughs> And we won't have another. We won't have a really another interesting movie coming out until the fourth, when we have Jackass Forever and Moonfall coming out. So, yeah, these next few weeks are gonna be pretty dry. And in the case of the twenty eighth, absolutely dead. So, yeah, yeah. But anywho, yeah, that's it. That's all. Make sure to subscribe, like this video, leave a comment, turn notifications, share the whole drill. Want to check out more videos like this? I got playlists on the homepage with only two videos now. <laughs> Try, don't worry, the, the playlist will fill up over time. It'll probably be more, it'll fill up a good amount by late February to early March. That's when you, it'll start being more substantial. But if you want to watch any of the past 2022 update predictions I've done, go right ahead. And also all the 2021 predictions, just go to the playlist tab. You'll find it. And you can watch all those. So, want to watch any of those? Go right ahead. There's also the canceled series where I go over all the movies I was supposed to come out but didn't. I only covered Scream once, and that was when it got the 2022 date initially, and it never moved. So, yeah, that's kind of remarkable. <laughs> um, so, yeah, if you want to watch that video, I forgot what number that was. I think it was sixteen. Yeah, episode 16. That's what it was. And I also and the most recent one I did was 101, where I covered Turning Red Go into Disney Plus. Go watch that. And all the others. There's 101 episodes. You have more than enough to choose from. You can just watch them all in chronological order, just seeing how things have evolved and changed. And yeah. So go do that. There's also box office recaps where I go over the box office results for any particular month. Um, just did 2021 double part one and two recaps, theatrical and streaming. January recap won't come out till February, the first week of February, so stay tuned for that. But if you want to watch any of the past recap videos that, you know, I made, you can go right ahead. And yeah, that's it. That's all. I am out. Goodbye.